Well, good morning and welcome to October 16th online worship service at Atwood Presbyterian. I'm the Reverend Ernie Naylor and I've been a minister at this church for going on eight years now. And uh, we are in the uh, small village of Atwood, Ontario. Uh, I may be cautious of saying small because there's a huge subdivision, another 200 houses going in. So maybe the, the most beautiful town of Atwood, Ontario. And uh, we have a few announcements before we uh, get into our worship service this morning. Uh, we always have here tradition a Remembrance Day Cenotaph service. So the memorial at, down at the end of town here, at the end of Monument Road, you can see it on Highway 23, we have a Remembrance Day service. And this year it's on November 6th. November 6th. And so mark that on your calendar. I do not have the exact date. It's either 1 or 2 o'clock. We're waiting word back from the Legion and a few other groups as to timing. But it will be November 6th, so just before Remembrance Day. Uh, Fowl Supper is coming up. This has been a tradition of this church for decades and decades. And uh, we have uh, a crew busy planning and uh, putting things together. And so if you would like a ticket to this meal, and it is a fabulous meal. Uh, if you want a ticket, give me a shout. Uh, it's, my number is 226-622-3096 if you would like a ticket. Uh, as part of that supper, we also have a, a silent auction, which has been a, a great fundraiser for the church. And every year people donate uh, items to the silent auction. It's, it's kind of fun seeing what items come in. And then, you know, you always have those bidding wars, you know, people, like maybe there's a pie or something that somebody really wants. And it's always kind of fun uh, to see that unfold. And if you have anything that you'd like to donate to the church, um, please, again, give me a shout at, at that number I just gave you, 226-622-3096. And uh, we'll make sure that that item gets in there. And by the way, uh, I really like raisin pie. So if a raisin pie shows up, I would be for sure bidding on that. Um, hint, hint. Uh, anyways, that's the silent auction. And this Sunday, we actually have a congregational meeting after church. And so the reason for this meeting, we've announced the last two Sundays in church, and the reason for this meeting is uh, Knox Moncton Presbyterian Church would like to amalgamate with our church. And so they've asked, uh, they voted on it, and they've agreed to that, and their next step is that we have to vote on it as our church. Uh, we're a democracy uh, in the Presbyterian Church. Everybody has a vote. And it's our turn to have our vote and, and what happens here. Um, I really don't see any downside to this. But again, it's a, it's a formality that we have to do. So a congregational meeting right after church this Sunday. So um, stay tuned next week and I'll let you know what the, uh, the verdict was on that. I think that's all the announcements I had. So let's, uh, let's start a church service. God promises us justice and teaches us persistence. God promises us compassion and teaches us not to lose heart. God promises to be with us and teaches us to tend to each other. So let us worship our God of comfort and challenge. We will offer our prayers, our praise to our God of hope and healing. Please join me in a word of prayer. Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit, you breathe life into all things and nourish your whole creation. You are a rock and refuge for your people, for you are trustworthy in all things. Your desire for peace with justice can never be defeated. You alone can bring life out of death and restore wholeness to broken lives. So we promise you and rejoice in the hope you offer, for your love is the power at work in every situation, seeking goodness and revealing truth a love that will never let us go. In our time of worship, we offer you our love and loyalty through Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I uh, have one scripture lesson this morning, and when you hear this, know this is not a mistake. It's the same one from last week, but we'll talk about that in, in the sermon. And this is the, the ten healed of leprosy. Ten people healed of leprosy is found in the 17th chapter of Luke, and I'm reading NIV version. 
Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go, show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, Were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Rise and go. Your faith has made you well. All men and all glory to God. The reading of his holy word. Well, as I said, does it feel like deja vu? Maybe you've heard the scripture lesson last week. Well, you did. It's kind of funny how things, when you have conversations, it puts a notion in your head. Well, I had a conversation this, uh, this past week with James Clark, the minister up at Knox Listowel, and he commented he was going to try something a little different. He was going to preach the same scripture four different ways. The intent was for people to understand the complexity of the scripture and the need to explore the scripture from different angles. And when we look at these different angles, we can interpret things that God is trying to say to us. And uh, it's just an amazing thing to do to look at these scriptures in different ways. So last week, if you were not here, I used the scripture and I talked about barriers that prevent people from having wholeness. And I'm talking like societal institutional rules. In Jesus' time, it was the institutional rules of the church. There was these embedded social beliefs. And then when we look at the current societal problems we face today and the rules around crying, that's the one I focused on last week. The, you know, the rules around crying, rules in particular for men, and what is frowned upon for this outward expression of crying because of inner pain. Conversation I had this week, again, conversation that kind of led to some thinking. The farmer was talking about doing some uh, intentional um, gratitude postings on Facebook. This farmer was busy in the field, but there was no time to really enjoy the fall weather. So this person started this practice. So posting a beautiful scene from the farm to Facebook each day. Almost all the pictures had landscapes and trees and fall or autumn color. And then the odd one would have a picture of the combine or the grain buggies. So I was in turn inspired with a try a 14 challenge day of my own to post a picture on Facebook of things that I am grateful for. It's been very enjoyable to see uh, the posts, you know, what I post and then see what other people say about the post and, and what they themselves Cell say about gratitude. One post I noted this week was from Creef Hills, and, and they were dealing with a sense of gratitude as well. And it said, deep gratitude opens us up so that we can see, have a new sense of perspective, no matter what happens in life. And that's a quote from Robert Wicks. I'll say that again. Deep gratitude opens us up so we can have a new sense of perspective no matter what happens in life. Hmm, I like that. Have gratitude. It's a, it's a challenge. And Paul, in his writings, makes this challenge in Ephesians. Make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then Paul speaks to the church in Colossians. He can, talks about this theme. Be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms and hymns and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your heart. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Well, I don't know about you, but I've been noticing there's been a lot of grumbling in the world. Not much gratitude going on or sense of gratitude. And I'm sure you've encountered some very negative people. And they seem to thrive on feeling miserable, grumbling about this, grumbling about that. 
but it seems to be kind of pervasive throughout society. It doesn't matter what the politicians do. It's never good enough. We're grumbling. We're grumbling about why the truck in Iowa took so long to remove. We grumble about the weather. And you know, even that nice weather we had last week, I was grumbling it could not last forever. We get into this echo chamber where the more we grumble, it leads to more grumbling. It kind of bounces around in there and just reinforces itself and gets more powerful. This grumbling. I've been thinking about this. What is the solution? How can we return to a place that says in Psalm 121 that we do not need to grumble for the Lord will keep you from all harm and he'll watch over your life? Should we not be filled with gratitude? And from that gratitude, as our wit quote says, this deep gratitude opens us up so we can have a new sense of perspective. Grumbling is nothing new. God sent Moses to lead the Israelites out of Egypt to free them from the bondage. And during the long trek in the desert, the people delivered, delivered, <laughs> delivered, developed an attitude of grumbling. All the Israelites grumbled. They grumbled against Moses. They grumbled against Aaron. They grumbled against the whole assembly. If only we had died in Egypt. Do you notice what Moses does? Moses kept before them the vision of God's gratitude in leading them to the promised land. You're grumbling, but look at what God has done for you. I've been pondering sense of gratitude if that is the way to overcome this negativity within society this grumbling this constant unhappiness to develop an attitude of gratitude it almost rhymes attitude of gratitude i can imagine that those 10 lepers who came to jesus asking to be healed i expect they spent much time and effort grumbling because leprosy was the most dreaded disease of that day they would grumble. Why me? They would grumble. Well, where's the food? They would grumble. Well, we're shut away from the rest of society. You can imagine. They were total outcasts. If we look at the nine lepers, we can see that there's a lack of gratitude after being healed. Jesus is pointing out something here. So last week we looked at societal factors and interfered with our relationship with God the religion, the social customs, the unspoken cultural attitudes, things outside of ourselves that are interfering with our ability to have a relationship with Jesus. Here Jesus is pointing to something inside of ourselves that each of us has control over. We can choose to grumble or we can choose to have gratitude. Only one out of nine is showing gratitude for what Jesus has done. Luke 17 says, and as the lepers went, they were cleansed. One of them, one, when he saw he was healed, came back praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and he thanked him. Remember Jesus questioning, where are the other nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? It was a very emotional response. Jesus' emotional response to the ingratitude of the nine lepers gives us a little glimpse into the heart of God. Jesus was disappointed. Only one person cared enough to express his gratitude. One person. Ten percent. I find it interesting if we look at the statistics of the number of people who attend church regularly. It's around 12%. Let's just round it down to 10%. It's almost an identical number to the number in the leper reading. <coughs> what should we be doing here? When you get up in the morning, you have two choices I would suggest. You can say, good morning, Lord, smile on your face, good morning, Lord. Or you can say, oh, good Lord, it's morning. Two choices. 
One's expressing gratitude, and the other one's grumbling. How you start the morning often determines how the day will go. Start out grumbling, and you'll be looking through the human glasses of grumbling all day. You maybe feel off. People will not be as nice. Trap will be congested. People at work will not appreciate you. You feel like you're not earning enough money. The list goes on and on. We have choices. I was thinking about this. I thought this modern day parable might be a good way to express this sense of grumbling and to be thankful for what we do have. And so this story is a modern day parable. And it goes like this. A poor man lived with his wife and six children in a very small one bedroom house. They were always getting in each other's way and there was so little space they could hardly breathe. Finally, the man could stand it no longer. He said to his wife and asked her what to do. And the wife very wisely would say, go see the minister. And after arguing a bit, he went. So the poor man told the minister how miserable things were at home, his wife and his kids, all eating and living and sleeping in one room. The, minister, the poor man said to the minister, we've even started to yell and fight with each other. Life couldn't be worse. The minister thought very deeply about the man's problem, and he said, well, do exactly as I tell you, and things will get better. Do you promise to do exactly what I tell you? Oh, I promise, the poor man said. The minister then asked the poor man a strange question. Do you own any animals? Why, yes, I have a cow, a goat, and I have some chickens. Good, the minister said. When you get home, take all the animals into your house to live with you. Well, the poor man was astonished to hear this advice from the minister, but he had made a promise to do exactly what the minister said. So he went home, took all the farm animals into the tiny one-bedroom house. Next day, the poor man ran back to see the minister. What have you done to me, he cried. It's awful. I did what you told me, and the animals are all over the house. Help me. The minister listened said calmly, Now go home and take the chickens outside. The man did as he was told, but he hurried back the next day. The chickens are gone, but the goat, oh, that goat, he's smashing the furniture. He's eating everything in sight. The good minister said, Go home, remove the goat, and may God bless you. So the man went home, took the goat outside, but he came back the next day again, crying and wailing, what a nightmare you have brought to my house. With a cow, it's like living in a stable. Can human beings live with an animal like this? Oh, the minister said sweetly, my friend, you are right. May God bless you. Go home and take the cow out of the house. Poor man went home quickly, took the cow to the house, and the next day he came running back. He said with a big smile on his face, Oh, our life is so perfect now. The animals are all out of the house. The house is so quiet, and we've got room to spare. What a joy. A different perspective. A grumbling. Modern day parable for you. You know, we have to remind ourselves every day how lucky I am. How lucky I am to be alive. How lucky I am to love life. How lucky I am to have family. How lucky I am to have my church family. How lucky I am to have a job. How lucky I am to have no job, maybe, for some of us. <laughs> Either way, it's a feeling of thankfulness. But above all, that thankfulness that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ died for our sins. Deep gratitude opens us up so we can have a new sense of perspective no matter what happens in life. What is that new sense of perspective? We see it in the one leper who returned in gratitude. Gratitude and practicing gratitude opens their eyes to see God at work in the world and the amazing things he has done. Amen. I will invite you to join me in prayer. God of life, you open our eyes on the world you love and show us your presence and your purpose. 
We see the beauty and wonder throughout creation and feel the love and compassion you offer through friend and stranger. For all these gifts, we give you thanks. We pray for those who cannot recognize these gifts in their lives. Open their eyes to your presence and your companionship so that they may know your steadfast love. God who listens, hear our prayer. God of justice, you open our eyes on the world and its anxiety and show us struggle and conflict. We see the burdens many carry in these stressful times. Today we pray for those whose businesses are struggling, for producers unsure they will receive a fair return, for workers uncertain about their job prospect, for families weighed down by rising costs. Open their eyes to new possibilities. Open our eyes to ways that we can support them. God of compassion, you open our eyes on the world in pain and show us suffering and despair. We see all the challenges in healthcare, entire professionals stretch beyond, beyond their limits. Renew their strength of purpose. We pray for communities struggling with chronic hunger, as well as the shifting reality of the pandemic. Open their eyes to your mercy. Open our eyes to ways we can offer support. God of wisdom, you open our eyes on the world out of balance and show us its many complexities. We see old animosities and fresh upheavals that put innocent lives at risk. We pray for the millions displaced by current conflicts and natural disasters. and pray that leaders in every country and community will attend to the suffering of their people with mercy and justice. Equip all those who prepare for ministry in our colleges and the knowledge and commitment needed to serve in complicated times. Open all our eyes to creative solutions for situations which breaks your heart and ours. God who listens, hear our prayer. And so we pray that the kingdom will come among us in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Well, we come to the end of another worship service, and I hope you found a message of inspiration within that, and maybe express some gratitude. And, Hopefully people around us pick up on that gratitude and in turn express gratitude and, and maybe, just maybe, will make a little impact on this negative world that we live in. Go in with the blessing of God. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and give you peace from this day forward and forevermore. Amen.